In today's video, I want to review a new article from TheFourthPeriod.com and Editor-in-Chief Dave Pagnona. He says the Kings and the Hurricanes are very hot for Nylander and are very anxious to acquire the Swedish superstar should the Leafs make a trade. We'll discuss this article coming up next. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams. So if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So as I mentioned off the top, I have an article here I'd like to present to you and review with you here today from the fourthbeard.com and editor-in-chief Dave Pagnona. Now if you're not familiar with this site, Dave Pagnona produces a lot of great hockey content. He does have some inside sources and has proved to be a very reliable source in the past for getting a lot of inside scoops. Now, I wouldn't say he's quite as reliable as some of the more uh, long-term insiders here, like a Bob McKenzie, Elliot Friedman, Darren Dreger, Pierre Lebrun, etc. But his information is always usually pretty accurate, pretty reliable, and he has created a pretty good reputation for himself. Uh, for example, the summer when John Tavares was signing with the Maple Leafs, if I'm not mistaken, he was the first one on Twitter to break the news about Tavares signing with the Maple Leafs this summer. Now, of course, a lot of people wanted to see it from other sources before they kind of confirmed that. But Dave Pagnon, in my opinion, is a reliable source. I do take what he says to be uh, pretty reliable. Uh, so I want to go through this article with you here today to see what he's saying about the Kings and Hurricanes being really hot and heavy here trying to acquire the services of the Swedish star William Nylander from the Toronto Maple Leafs. So moving on to this article here from Dave Pagnotto on thefourthbeard.com. I'm going to put some screenshots here up of uh, some snippets of the article and kind of read through it here to tell you what he's saying. It starts off saying the Toronto Maple Leafs have less than a month to either re-sign William Nylander or trade him if the player hopes to play in the NHL this season. As contract talks between the Leafs and Nylander's camp remain fairly stagnant, the Maple Leafs appear to be more engaged in trade talks than earlier in the season. While roughly a dozen teams have inquired about Nylander's services, the LA Kings and Carolina Hurricanes appear to have expressed the most interest according to multiple sources. TFP first reported the Los Angeles interest last week. Speaking on the basis of anonymity, one league source told the fourth period on Friday the Kings appear willing to package defenseman Jake Muzzin and left winger Tanner Pearson in a deal which may also include additional pieces for Nylander. Muzzin, 29, has one year left on his contract after this year and comes with a $4 million cap hit, while Pearson, 26, has two years left on his deal after this season with a $3.75 million cap hit. So obviously Pagdonos is indicating here that the Leafs and Kings have engaged in some dialogue around trading William Nylander to the LA Kings and that the Kings appear to be interested in sending Pearson and Muzzin possibly additional pieces. So we're probably talking about a prospect or pick or something along those lines to go back to the Maple Leafs. Now, Jake Muzzin's going into the final year of his contract. I would assume if the if the Leafs were happy with him as the main defenseman coming back, that they probably would negotiate an extension uh, with him as well. I don't imagine they're going to want to you know pick up a top four defenseman just for one season. Uh, although they very well may do that, but I would think you know giving up an asset like Nylander, they're going to want some uh, some good assets in return that are under contract for a period of time. That to me would only make the most sense. But either way, interesting take here from what the Kings appear to be interested in moving to acquire William Nylander. So, so let me your thoughts down below. What do you think of this deal? If it were to go down like this, let's say the Kings are offering Pearson, Muzzin, maybe a, a draft pick or a prospect along with it for William Nylander. Do you see that as being a viable trade for the Maple Leafs? Uh, and if you're an LA Kings fan, I'd love to hear your thoughts about maybe acquiring Nylander and what the price tag here to do so. Now in our prior video that we released earlier today, as most of you are well by now, the LA Kings have fired head coach John Stevens. So Rob Blake had to make a coaching change here. It's been reported he's been looking to make some, uh, some changes with the roster, but it's not exactly easy to do. They have uh, the LA Kings have a roster that's full of aging veterans with big contracts full of no move clauses. So breaking up the band in LA is certainly not going to be an easy task. If the LA Kings really want to shake up this roster, they're very well likely going to have to take a look at some other younger players that they probably would prefer not to trade. So we're, we're looking at guys like Alec Martinez, Jake Muzzin, Tanner Pearson, maybe Adrian Kempe, and so on. They're the pieces that would be easier to move, and especially if they're going to go after a guy like Nylander, that would certainly be more attractive here to the Leafs. I'm sure the Leafs don't really want another big contract of an aging veteran here. That's what they're they're trying to avoid, too big of a contract with William Nylander, and they really, because of the salary cap, can't take on 
too much anyway. So obviously it has to make sense, uh, not only money-wise, but of course to fit into the roster side of things as well. So I don't think if the Kings go after Nylander here, that it's going to be a case of them uh, trading one of their uh, aging veterans here with a big contract. Now there's been some talk out there about Drew Doughty going to the Leafs, which we discussed here before. And really he just signed a mega extension here, uh, $11 million. There's no way the Leafs can take that contract. So I'm just going to shut that down here right now. If you see any reports or rumors about uh, Doughty going to the Leafs, I would be absolutely shocked if that happened. I don't see there's any way how the Leafs could accommodate that contract along with Tavares, plus what they have to give here to Matthews and Marner coming up. Then they got Nylander. This is what they're trying to avoid here is trading a big contract that they seem hesitant to give to Nylander. So they're certainly not going to take on another $11 million contract from Drew Doughty in return. So if you see any reports out there on that, I would not give it any time of day. I did see another report out there as well about the source I don't really consider to be all that reliable, saying that the Leafs and Kings were discussing a potential Nylander trade, and that very well could be the case. That would not be shocking. However, the part that I found very surprising was that they were discussing Slava Voinov as a potential return to the Maple Leafs. Now, as we know, Slava Voinov is currently uh, you know, trying to be reinstated to the NHL, and if he is reinstated, his rights will belong to the Kings. Now, it's been well known and reported that the Kings don't seem interested in bringing him back. So should he be successful in being reinstated to the NHL, uh, they would likely trade his rights to another club. Uh, but really, at this point, it's really hard to say if any teams really want to be associated with all the potential backlash that could come from taking on a player of his name, you know, because of everything that's gone down with this player. So it doesn't really, you know, there's a lot of teams that have reportedly shown interest in Voinov. I just don't see the Maple Leafs going down that road as well. Plus, the other big factor here is that assuming Voinov is reinstated, He's likely going to be suspended by the NHL for a significant period of time before he's allowed to play. So step one is get reinstated. Step two is face the disciplinary actions for what happened in the past because the, they did not make it that far in the process before uh, before he took off to go back to Russia. Um, so the Leafs aren't going to make a trade like that. I mean, come on, give Kyle Dubas a little bit more credit than the fact that he tried to acquire a guy like Voinov. For his playing talents alone, yes, it would probably make sense, but they're not going to get into that racket and the mess that's going to come with it. I really don't see it happening. Now, the article goes on here with some additional information, so let's put that up on the screen and we'll read through that. According to a second league source, the Hurricanes may be the front runners in this race should the Maple Leafs decide to trade William Nylander. And any deal with Carolina is almost certain to include defenseman Brett Pesci. Pesci 23 is in the first year of a six year contract, $24.15 million deal. The Maple Leafs and Hurricanes have discussed a deal involving Justin Falk in the offseason, but Toronto's expressed significant interest in Pesci. Two separate sources have confirmed to the fourth period the Hurricanes have spoken with Nylander's agent, Louis Gross, while one source believes the two sides have discussed a contract. An offer sheet, though, is not to believe to be in the cards. Gross did not respond when contacted by the fourth period for comment. It's believed the Hurricanes and Leafs are discussing a larger trade involving multiple pieces on both sides. The Hurricanes has sent personnel to watch Toronto's last few games, while Dubas made headlines for taking in a Hurricanes game in Raleigh last week. So there you have it from the fourth period, to the, kind of referencing the fact that the Leafs and Hurricanes have been scouting each other quite heavily. They've had multiple representation at each game, uh, including Kyle Dubas himself taking in a game in uh, the Hurricanes building. I've had comments on other William Nylander videos where we've discussed this situation before, saying why would they be scouting Toronto so hard if they're interested in Nylander? He's not playing. That's right, because the rumor and the belief is, is that if this deal does happen and the potential scenario that they may be discussing here involves additional pieces. It looks as though there would be multiple pieces from each side going back with Nylander being the main piece going out of Toronto with Brett Pesci being the main defenseman coming back from Carolina with other pieces involved in the trade as well. So they very well could be scouting each other to, to kind of make this deal work. Now, it does make sense. I'm not saying this is definitely going to happen. Obviously, this is... Like I said, information and speculation from here from another source that I do deem to be reliable. Uh, and it does make sense here that the deal could potentially work for both sides should the, uh, the Leafs decide to go down the trade route here with William Nylander. To me, the Carolina deal makes much more sense than the LA Kings deal. If the Toronto Maple Leafs go down this road, they're getting cost certainty with Brett Pesci as he's got a much longer term contract. He's only in year one on a six year deal on a very team friendly contract. I do think he'd bring some stability to that blue line that they desperately need to take it the next step forward. Uh, at the same time here, they could get some additional pieces from Carolina, uh, whether it be draft picks or prospects or maybe another younger player as well to kind of offset here, make things uh, you know a little bit more even in this trade. Carolina does have a lot of other interesting uh, assets in that regard 
that could certainly make this deal very intriguing for the Leafs to consider. Should this drag on much longer? I mean, we're already November the 5th here. We have a cutoff date for him to get into play here by December the 1st. So we're less than a month away. The last time we discussed this, it was around 28 days. You know, we're down to around 25, soon to be 24 now. So, you know, time is ticking on a Nylander deal with the Leafs. And it's not a guarantee that they're even going to trade him. They could consider just saying, you know what? If it's not done by December 1st, he can sit out. We're not going to risk losing this guy. Then it just means that they have the all big three contracts to look after next year and to have this drag on that long. I just I don't see it necessarily happening. I think uh, William Nylander really wants to play this year. So either one way or another, I see it getting figured out. But it makes sense here that what Dave Pagdon is talking about in this article, that they are the two front runners. Uh, the, the land Nylander should the Leafs trade him. And personally, between the two, I think the Carolina deal makes much more sense. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments down below in the comment section on these two scenarios. What do you think of this article? Like I said, I do consider Dave Pagnon a reliable source, and I think the Carolina deal makes a lot more sense to me. But what do you think? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section, and we can continue the conversation. If you're new to the channel here, hope you consider subscribing. We cover all 31 NHL teams, and there's plenty of content here for all hockey fans to enjoy. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button as well. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We will catch you next time.